Oh, hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato? Kaniga, is it me? Am I a good potato? I most certainly hope I am. Hi everyone, welcome back to Scarlet Hollow Part 8. I think we are nearing the end of this episode. Alright, let's get started. You and Stella turn to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear her approach. Alright, so bloody shirt. Oh, and the two eyes. Was this person the person staring at us in the woods? Might be. <laughs> Welcome home. Before you respond, the door uh, behind you swings open. An older woman stands in the entryway. She's Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? Okay, that guy was Wayne. He knew who I was and he said, welcome back. Who the heck is he? And who is this? Hi, Mrs. Forsyth. This is Bian. Is it okay if we come in? Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put on water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Oh, look at her home. Aww. Is this, is this her husband, maybe? Husband and son and daughter? <laughs> tea is life. Ooh, look at all this tea. These greens. Welcome to my little nook. This place always has the loveliest aromas. It's nice to finally meet you, Ben. I am so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the holler. Now poor Perlaine is gone as well. Wait a second. Why are all the women dying off? Do you let me know if there's anything you need while we're in town, or you're in town? <laughs> I'm gonna offer Sybil my bowl of peanuts again. Okay, first off, who was that outside? <sighs> Just a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. Okay, that man knew us, he knew me, and he was following us through that forest. Does he have any clues about what's going on here? Because I want to know. You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory, unsavory tales of her youth. I never met Perlene. I never met Perlene. You don't have to pass in your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman. Ha, ah, that's fair, child, but it seemed like the right thing to do. How did you know that my mom died? Oh, Parlene was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I want to get an earful of. Bless her heart. We need your help. Ah, yes. I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's go got you here so late? Do you seem troubled? You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? I am not so sure I follow, my dear. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable thing are you talking about? Ah, <sighs> the Duke was killed tonight by something in the woods. Oh my lord, have you contacted the police? Yes. It didn't take it very seriously. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things out there, they don't even know how to describe them. Um, I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This this wasn't this wasn't the local wildlife, Mrs. Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out a memory card from her sleeve and pops into her phone. <laughs> this must have been why she was so quick to hand over her camera. Holy crap, Stella. You sly little fox. I was about to just let the police hold on to this. At least not before you had a chance to make a copy. There you go. Stella, my girl. 
You are thinking smart. <laughs> Smooth. The cops are gonna be mad. Ugh, yeah, whatever. No, just kidding. I can't believe you're withholding evidence. I'm saying nothing. Um. Smooth. The cops wouldn't know what to do with that footage anyway. Imagine if they accidentally erased it. Uh, yeah, but we should turn it in after we make a copy. Exactly. I'll give it to them if they ask. But for now, we can examine the footage for ourselves. Where was this? Up the mountains to the northwest. Within the town limits? Eh, uh, yes? I see. Is there a way to make the video... <clears throat> Is there a way to make the video bigger? Louder if you can. I need to plug the memory card into the computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. Oh, Kanika! Okay, so Kanika's Stella's friend who works at the general store. Kanika? Are we seeing Kanika? You better come with, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her noisy mother. Kanika, come out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh, hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato? Kanika, is it me? Am I a good potato? I most certainly hope I am. And a stranger. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> Offer Kanika your boiled peanuts. <laughs> this is such a great comedy point here. Um, <laughs> I'm not in the mood to introduce myself. Uh, I was helping Stella film a video in the woods and something terrible happened. Tabitha's cousin? Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if you could borrow your if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. Duke got killed out in the woods tonight. It's on the recording. What? Are you serious? Duke's dead? We can watch this without you. You know, I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella! What the heck is this? This is far beyond my ability to contribute. I'll leave the thinking to you humans. I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Bien and I have no idea how to make heads or tails with it. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fine too, thanks for asking. I just remain silent. Remain silent. Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? We talked to the police. I hope they told Bo, but Earl and Deputy Franklin don't seem to be much in a hurry to do anything. I'll call them later tonight. But for now, we have something far more serious to discuss. <laughs> I don't, jeez, I like Duke. Um, I agree, those things are still out there, and as long as they are, more people are in danger. So very true, but not for the reasons you think. These things, my grandmother called them ditchlings. They are a terrible omen. A sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on. Whatever doings this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Bien with this tally po crap. A man just died. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creature themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene in the woods. How can you say that? Duke is dead! An unfortunate accident and nothing more. Just as birds flock before a storm, 
the Jitchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. Interesting. So are they saying that we actually could have stayed in the woods to take a look, a closer look at all the animals and that they were the ones who retrieved all the animals to lay them there? So the Ditchlings aren't that bad? They're, they were just there to collect the animals and lay them there? And the accident with Duke was truly an accident? I guess we'll find out. To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many on places. Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mom, they clearly had a rough tonight. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This, that is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic. We can't roll that out. Not after what we saw. But fine. Let's focus on what we do know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw that nest? What were those growths? Hmm. They're there for Duke. Why? Hmm. <laughs> Y'all worrying too much. Um. They're making more of themselves. Maybe those ditchlings were here for Duke, like some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Unfortunately, no. Their presence forewarns of something far more sinister than one's man's death. Stop speculating about this occult nonsense. Let's focus on what we know. Right. What are those gross? Whatever it is, it's not good. Yeah, no kidding. Maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle. Exactly. That looked like an embryo in that lump. Or something. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something like this. Out there. Not without doing some sort of research or talking to a biologist. Also guys, I just noticed that Kanika's wearing a Sailor Moon shirt. That's pretty cool. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that will clear all this up? Oh dear, I forgot entirely the tea I put on. Let me fix you a couple of cups. It'll soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late and I should let Bian get some rest. I ran her ragged day with all hiking and running through the woods in terror. <laughs> I can keep going, I'm still wired. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna sleep tonight. stay up this is important okay maybe it's that I'm eager to get home and start doing some research I'll ask around on my usual forms to see if anyone has some information on ditchlings is that what you call them that's right you can go home now and do try to get some rest don't stay up all night online let me get you some of my homemade housemade peppermint tea to go to <laughs> Just reading that entirely wrong. Let me get you some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe your soul. Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see you around. Bye, Mian. It's excellent. Ice are warm. Though, with the nights getting chillier, one will probably be best. Helps wakes up the bone. Be careful out there, the both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. What an unfortunately short visit! Alrighty, let's get back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay tonight if you want. Hmm... Yeah, yeah, sleep over. I am terrified of being alone tonight. Honestly, um, I gotta check in on her though. I should probably check, I should probably head back and uh, check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back on the mountains alone? Um, <sighs> I'm actually a little nervous. Uh, yeah. Can I sprint back? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. 
Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, we're in this together. It's not like I have a choice. I don't know. I'll lean down as soon as I can. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, we are. Stay safe, buddy. Good luck, Bian. You begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. It's quiet. Almost home. <laughs> Nothing popping up yet. Just the owls. <laughs> <gasps> Whew. You made it. <laughs> run in. <laughs> run into the door. Your salvation in sight, you make a mad dash to the door. I guess uh, I'll knock first to let her know I'm entering. As you raise the arms, the door swings open. Where the heck have you been? I texted you back. Do you not know me, Wayne? There was someone playing in the piano in the sealed off wing of the estate where you told me not to go to. Hi, Tabby. I watched a man die tonight. I want to leave. Look, I got stuck into something. It was weird. I met this girl in town. We hit it off. Um. I texted you back as soon as I had reception. Oh, wait. Sorry, that's me. I texted you back as soon as I had reception. Did you? I didn't notice. Do you know anyone named Wayne? You feel a slight but palpable hesitation before Tabitha answers. I employ over a hundred people. I'm sure I know a Wayne. Um, do you know a Wayne, Tabitha? Hmm. You hesitated before answering me about Wayne. It's late, Bian, and you never came home. I'm sorry that your random questions and accusations caught me off guard. Wait, you smell like nature and old dog. <laughs> what does nature smell like? You must have met Stella then. Ugh, that explains everything. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Can you tuck me in? Wait, I, I'm still all hyped up on adrenaline from tonight. I would love to just hang out for a little while, cool down a bit. No, I'm not going to hang out with you. I'm late. I'm tired. Going to bed. Don't do anything stupid while I'm asleep. Just go to your room and sleep. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. <laughs> Why does this room get creepier and creepier? And is something going to appear by the window over here? As you sail into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she's been crying. Did you make it back all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some Z's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you found in those moments. For now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. But maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Oh man. Tea brewing. I'm 
someone is crying. Hope they're alright. Oh my! Uh, there's some blood on the ground. In someone's house and someone just opened the door. Oh, are these alpaca? Uh, there's some eyes coming out of that hole. And that is one big pumpkin. Oh, there's also a coal mine. Very dark. Entrance. And a door. That's slowly opening. Oh, oh, some, someone's shadow. Okay. Hello. Oh, is everything alright with that door frame? It's a little, uh... Oh, and it's locked. Alright. Oh, was that in that house just now? Oh, man. Alright, was that chapter one? It's pretty darn exciting. Really cool. Very cool. Alright, alright. So, so let's, let's recap. Let's take a second to recap here. So, uh, we met some, some more people. We met Stella, her adorable dog, Gretchen. Um, we go into the, uh, the diner and we meet her friend Avery, who's one of the waiters there. Um, and we kind of see in the background, we see Earl and, uh, Deputy Franklin, possibly in the background. So, we go to the forest in order to find the skunk ape that, um, Gretchen, or sorry, not Gretchen, Stella wants to find. Um, we go in the woods, we hear a weird noise, this deer suddenly starts talking to us saying, you know, pain, rot, decay, or something like that. Has a, two huge lumps on the side of the head and disappears. You know, we eat some, we eat some trail mix, we talk about our lives a little bit. Uh, then we hear another, or actually we see a pair of eyes in the distance. Um, like someone's watching us, but we don't know who that is or what that is. Um, we hear another noise. Uh, it turns out to be a chicken with a huge lump on its side. Um, something grabs the chicken and we follow it. Stella trips over the chicken, unfortunately crushes its wings, which is really sad. We take a look at the chicken, look at the lump. Seems to be like there might be something in it. We don't know. Um, Duke suddenly pops out from the, the bushes and he sees his bird, which I forgot to say his chicken is named Bir Birdie. Um, he gets really upset over it and we start hearing noises around us and the ditchlings are surrounding us and they're really creepy creatures. And uh, let's see. Um, and then I guess Earl becomes really upset and tries to shoot one of them with a shotgun. But then something happens. We don't know if it's an accident or if the, the ditchling did it to him, but he actually shoots himself in the head. Uh, not a good sight or image to see. We follow them. We come across this clearing with all these dead animal bodies and some animals with the lumps on them. We're getting surrounded by the ditchlings and we run um, and we make it back uh, to uh, the outside area where we get reception. Stella calls the cops and we meet uh, we meet Earl, uh, which is an old man, uh, Hugby, I guess, Earl Hugby. And then Franklin, Deputy Franklin, who wears the glasses. Stella gives him the camcorder, uh, but she takes out the memory card. Um, they give us a drive back to Stella's place. Uh, we then go over to um, Stella's friend, it's mom's place, Sybil, um, or Forsyth. Uh, and while we're about to enter, this creepy guy appears out of nowhere who knows my name, says, welcome. And then Sybil opens the door and says, oh, that's just Wayne. He's a sick man. Wayne, the mysterious guy, disappears. We go in. We meet Kanika. We're talking about the video. We watch the video. Everyone's disturbed. Stella's upset that they're doing nothing to take care of Duke's body, which is just laying in the forest somewhere, probably for the ditchlings to get. You know, you, I walk back home, I find Tabitha, she gets a little hesitant when I mention the name Wayne. She 
uh, knows that I hung out with Stella and doesn't seem too happy about it because it was hinted that they were friends before in high school and they cut communication off after that. And now I'm in bed, gone to sleep, and now it's the next episode. All right. Well, that was quite a ride. Um, I hope you guys had fun. Um, I had fun. It was a very interesting episode. I think the most disturbing thing was probably Duke after the gun accident. Um, and I felt really bad for the deer and for Birdie. Um, I really hope we get to see Dustin again. If you guys remember Dustin, he's that little, uh, <laughs> the little animal we found in our, uh, our drawer, the possum. Um, all right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, please like it. Uh, please subscribe if you want more, if you want to see more. And I appreciate all the support. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next episode.